This is how 3.5 level doubles players position themselves at the start of a point. And this is how 5.0 level doubles players position themselves at the start of a point. Can you spot the difference? In this video, I'll reveal what it is and why 3.5 players make the game way too hard on themselves while making it way too easy for their opponents. In all the points you're seeing right now, somebody was starting in the wrong place, which opened up big opportunities for their opponents. That ends today, because I'm going to show you exactly where the right place is so you can start winning more doubles points and more doubles matches right away. If that sounds good to you, do me a favor and click that like button and let's jump right into it. Okay, we're here on the strategy board and I've set up all these players in exactly the same place that 3-5 level point started. We have the Serbian player right here, we have the returner here, returner's partner, and the server's partner. So we need to expose exactly why this is such a weak starting position. And we're gonna go back to the real life situations and analyze them in a second, but let's just do some chalk talk first because this is so critically important. The server and the returner, their primary goal in a doubles point is A, to get the point started, and then B, to keep the point going by avoiding the two attacking players and keeping the ball back to the other defensive player. I'm not trying to say that the server can't hit a great shot or the returner can't hit a great shot. It's possible for them to attack. It's possible for them to be on offense. But compared to a net player, somebody who's close to the net, the ability to attack just isn't nearly the same. So the two baseline players are relatively speaking on defense and the two net players are relatively speaking on offense. Now, when the serve goes into play and it hits the box, well, it has to hit the box because that's the rules. The returning player can't charge forwards and take the ball out of the air. So we know the serve has to bounce, which means one player out of these four has a very clear first mover advantage to be able to be the first person to try to put the ball away. And that's the server's partner. The server's partner is the first player in every doubles point that has the option of taking the ball out of the air. And because they're starting close to the net in an attacking position, they pose a really big threat on the returning team. So what does that mean the job of the returning player's partner is? Well, think about it. If we know that this person is going to attack first, and yeah, of course, we know the returner would like to avoid the server's partner, but that doesn't always happen. So let's just say hypothetically, the server's partner does get the ball. What would be the easiest spot on the other side of the court for them to attack? Well, it would be this spot. Right in the center of the court would be the easiest target, right in between the two players. Here's a, a critical just strategy fundamental in both singles and doubles, but I would say especially doubles. You can't cover everything. You can't. You and your partner cannot cover the entire court all at the same time. There's no magical space you can stand on the court where you have the angles covered and you have the middle covered. You have the neck covered and you have the lob covered. You have to pick. And if you put yourself right dead in the middle, then you're leaving a little bit of space for your opponent to hit either one. So it's important that you're aware of the fundamental path and pattern that the, the ball likes to travel in. And in doubles, in general, the ball likes to travel through the center of the court. And if you look at stats at all levels of play, most shots in doubles travel through a center window. Of course, there are shots that go down the line. That happens. But most balls travel through the middle. And if we leave an easy target for our opponent, then it means we're making their job easy and we're making our job hard. So with all those things in mind, what would be a perfect position for this person to stand if they know their partner is returning and they know the easiest target for an attacking player is down the middle? Well, if they know that and they're anticipating what's gonna happen next, they would actually put themselves much closer to the middle. Remember, we can't cover both the angle and the center. We can't cover both of those. And which one is harder? Which one is more difficult to hit? For most players, most of the time, this angle shot is higher skill level. It takes more skill. It takes a little bit of touch. It takes just the right angle. So that means we're introducing more likelihood that an error happens by that net player. If we just block the middle and we say, I have this covered, you can try over there, then we increase the likelihood that they make a mistake. 
And it's the same basic principle for the starting position for the server's partner. This player, when we looked at the starting position of the three five players, was closer to the alley than to the middle. And this player, the returner's partner, was closer to the alley than to the middle. And so what we've done here is we've told the two baseline players, here, you can have a nice wide open space to hit to that's high percentage, that's very easy, relatively speaking, and I'm gonna cover instead this hard shot down the line. And remember, you can't cover both great all the time. You have to very, almost always pick one or the other. And so when we glance back really quick at the starting position of those three five players, the, the message they're sending, the baseline player, both these net players is, I've got the alley covered. I've got the alley covered. And so what they're doing inadvertently is also sending another message saying, here you go, you can hit down the middle, and that makes your opponent's job very easy, and it makes your job very hard. If you want to intercept the ball as a net player and you're starting in this alley coverage position, the chances of you intercepting the ball and doing something meaningful and positive and productive for your team are way lower because you're just leaving much more space for you to have to run, and it's much easier for your opponents on the baseline to avoid you in the first place. So what's the big deal? Why are we spending so much time about where we're positioned and consciously covering an easier shot versus a harder shot? Well, here's why. Big thank you to Warren from TennisAnalytics.net who did this analysis on thousands of doubles points from everyday doubles players, just like you and me. And he's broken this into three, five, and four zero points from ladies and men. Over on the left here, we've got ladies three, five, ladies four zero, and then men three, five, men four zero. And the red bars are points that end with somebody on the point making an error. And the green bars are points that end with somebody making a winner. So if you look at this quickly, you can see that best case scenario, about one out of five points are ending with somebody hitting a winner, and the other four out of five points are ending with somebody making an error. This is why this is so important. If we can consciously shift our position and telegraph, tell our opponents, I'm covering this section right here, and it's the easy target, and you're telling them, by extension, go try that one over there, and it's a harder target, the chances of them making a mistake go up, and that means you win more points, and you win more matches, because so many more points end with an error than end with a winner. This is why consciously standing in the right place right from the beginning is so critical to your results. Now let's go back to that original point, and hopefully it should start to be really visually obvious to you at this point Look at how incredibly wide open this is. And again, we, we know, we understand that this return player doesn't want to hit to the server's partner, but a good net player is gonna do everything they can to get the ball. They're going to be poaching, they're gonna be faking, they're gonna be making the life of the returner very difficult, and if this target is left wide open, then it's just easy pickings for that server's partner. So it's even worse, look at what happens here. Keep your eyes on the, the returner's partner up at the net and watch what happens here when the ball goes in the, into the box, look at where his eyes are and now watch where his momentum is going. He actually initially shifts away from the center, opening even more space for that server's partner and then where does his momentum go? Before the ball goes past the server's partner, which is right here. Remember, that's the most offensive player, the person who has the biggest opportunity. And look at what's happening here. The returner's partner is actively moving away from the section of court that he's supposed to be protecting. He's already walking forwards before the ball has made it past the service partner, which means that he's actively abandoning the exact chunk of court that's easiest to hit. And so he's making the job of his opponent as easy as possible. Now, I don't wanna just pick on lower level players, so here's some very experienced 4-0 players who've been to sectionals and regionals many times in uh, USTA, they're all on the same team. First of all, look at the contrast here between the 3-0 or 3-5 players and how open the middle is, and look at how much more of the court is being covered by these players. The chunk of court in the middle is much smaller, and they're consciously leaving much more space available down the alley. So. Right off the bat, we see some improvement here, but the same types of mistakes still get made even at higher levels of play. I want you to keep your eyes on this player right here, the returner's partner. 
This time, the service partner is closer to the center than what we saw from the lower level players. And so you can see right off the bat, he's hoping to get more involved in the point. But as the serve goes into play, watch the feet of the returner's partner on the far side of the court. Watch how he looks and similar to the 3-0 player is already shifting forwards and a little away from the middle. And that leaves the center exactly open. This player at the net, the service partner, now we're dealing with good enough players. Notice, by the way, how he's preemptively shifting towards the middle to give himself the best possible chance of intercepting the ball. Now we're dealing with good enough players at the net that you cannot make this kind of mistake. And you can see the returner's partner realizes it too. He starts leaning forwards, leans away from the middle, sees that, uh-oh, the ball's about to get hit by the service partner, tries to get back to the middle in time to protect the easy spot on the court, but it's too late. And it's too late because he moved in the wrong direction at the wrong time, and it left the easiest possible target open for that opposing net player. Now let's look at some 5-0 plus. These are all college players currently playing, very high level doubles players. Look at the difference now. There's almost no room in the middle to hit anymore. And they're consciously telling their opponents, hey, if you want to aim here, go ahead. And if you want to aim, uh, let's see, for, for this player right here, if you want to aim over here, go ahead. So this returner's partner now is squeezing the middle. And look at his position. Look at his stance. Like he's showing with his feet, I am watching you. I'm spying on you. And the last thing that's going to happen here is you are not going to hit to this chunk of the court. Super smart. And it's because they're such high-level players that they have these habits. If you want to be a higher level player, then copy these habits. They're covering the easy targets, even though these are all extremely high level players. And this player can, he's got hands, he's got power, he's got touch, he has offense. And so he can hit the ball wherever he wants. But this player is still making the conscious decision to cover the easiest spot on the court. And those of us playing against lower level opponents, we should certainly be doing the same thing because most points end with an error. And so when this point kicks off and gets started, watch the server's partner, how, again, he's jumping and hopping and leaning towards the middle. And look at the returner's partner. He's jumping and hopping, and his eyes are on that server's partner. And so he's primed and ready in case the ball gets intercepted in the middle. So as the return gets hit, look at this. Look at, <laughs> look at how much court is open in the middle, almost none. And look at how much court is available on the outsides. Editors, can you do me a favor and just throw up a split screen here? So here's the difference between, and it's kind of ironic because these players have dramatically more weapons and dramatically more precision and more ability to hit the alley. And yet look at how open these players are choosing to leave the outside of the court and look at how much they're clamoring to try to cover the center. This is how you play good doubles. If you enjoyed this training and you'd like more, go to textbookdoubles.com right now for more insights that will transform your game and help you play a much higher level of doubles. Thank you so much for watching. Keep up the amazing work on your game.